Tomorrow is the day if your Spokane student doesn't have their measles vaccine, they can't go to school. It's been nearly a week since a freak snowstorm took down trees and power lines all over Spokane. Tonight, the cleanup efforts continue and we're checking in on the progress. And the beloved former WSU quarterback has fans going nuts. Now you can look like him thanks to Snapchat. Good evening. Thanks so much for staying up late with us tonight. I'm Tim Pham. We saw gray skies today, but thankfully with just a little rain and not any snow this time. Meteorologist Michelle Boss is in the Weather Center with some nicer weather for the start of the week. Michelle? Yeah, you got some if you have some yard work to get finished up tomorrow, Tuesday, and maybe even part of Wednesday. We'll probably do the best days to do that uh, before we see the return of some wet weather. We had some cloudy skies today, but only a couple of sprinkles, less than a hundredth of inch, an inch reported uh, throughout Spokane. Coeur d'Alene and Deer Park as we check out satellite and radar right now. We're still seeing overcast skies. Either we're going to clear these clouds out by tomorrow morning or if we do clear them out overnight, we might see a little bit of patchy fog early tomorrow morning. But either way, those clouds should clear out by mid morning and we're looking at mostly sunny skies tomorrow. 44 degrees right now in Spokane with the clouds that shouldn't be quite as chilly tomorrow morning. We're looking at mid 30s, 42 in Coeur d'Alene. It has dropped into the upper 30s in Moses Lake and 41 degrees in Pullman. Here's a look at the next 12 hours, partly to mostly cloudy skies overnight lows in the middle and upper 30s and plenty of sunshine by late morning tomorrow and early afternoon 55 for the high. We'll see some milder temperatures Tuesday and Wednesday with highs in the upper 50s to near 60. Michelle, thank you. Looking ahead, tomorrow is the deadline for Spokane Public School students to be fully vaccinated for measles, mumps and rubella. A Washington law that went into effect in July no longer allows for personal exemptions for the MMR vaccine. It requires students to either get vaccinated or claim a religious or medical exemption in order to attend public schools and daycares. At last check, as many as 23 students in the Spokane School District are not vaccinated. Without proof of compliance, students will not be able to return to school tomorrow. Well, take a look. We are comparing the damage at Manitou Park after this week's freak snowstorm. On the left is video of Wednesday, the day after the storm hit. On the right, you can see a dramatic difference on Friday. People on Manitou Boulevard are still working to clean up their neighborhood. Some streets were closed because of all of the debris on the road. Krem 2's Brandon Jones shows us how cleanup is going. Yeah, it's been several days since that snowstorm rolled through and you can still see the effects it left behind. I drove up and down Manitou Boulevard and I can honestly say I've seen some progress being made. All of the large and heavy objects have been moved out of the street and trash cans are filled up with leaves and branches. Earlier this morning, Rob Jobson's backyard was layered with fallen debris from a maple tree just a few feet away from his house. It's the first snowstorm aftermath he's had to clean up since moving back to eastern Washington. Yeah, we were in a studio apartment in Seattle and, and came back here in the late spring of this year. And uh, cutting up wood and raking up leaves sure beats sitting in traffic, so... Him and his wife worked during the week, so Sunday was the best day for them to tag team the mess and get everything out to the streets. The tree did give them a few problems, though. It knocked out power for a couple days, and there's still branches on top of their neighbor's house. All right, so this family was gracious enough to let me come out here, bother them on their Sunday afternoon, and help them take some of their debris out to the to the side of the road. The fallen tree isn't all bad, though, because it's an opportunity to stack up on firewood, and Rob is taking advantage of the resources. Yeah, we have some firewood now for car camping this fall and spring, and and uh, that'll be nice. Others are using the change in scenery as a chance to get some festive photos in. Look at your daddy and smile big. All the debris that's been piled up in the middle of the street have been slowly changing colors and create a fall atmosphere that's picture perfect. I've known of this area up in Manitou Park for quite a long time. Every single fall, it all these leaves that just kind of hover over the street, kind of like that rainbow effect. While mom and dad have pictures to last forever, the kids got a chance to play in the leaves. It almost looks like a hurricane rolled through this portion of town, but everyone I got a chance to speak with had positive mindsets throughout the entire ordeal. They've got all of the debris moved onto the street, and now they're just waiting for it to be collected. From Manitou Boulevard, Brandon Jones, Crim 2 News.
Dozens of people waited in line for a few hours at the waste energy facility yesterday, but today it was a much different story. Anyone trying to dump debris left by Tuesday's snowstorm waited in much shorter lines. The city says they're offering free disposal of debris from the snowstorm at the facility on Geiger Boulevard until next Saturday. Well, a downtown Spokane business closed early Friday after they received a mass shooting threat from a former employee. 41 year old Chesed Johnson allegedly threatened to shoot up his former workplace with an AR-15. Police say Johnson also made threats to shoot up the employer's office in Dallas. Because of the severe nature of the threats and Johnson's prior history, the business shut down operations Friday and remained closed yesterday. Police have not said which business he worked for. Officers found Johnson at his home, but they didn't find any firearms in his possession. There's public outcry tonight in Texas after another deadly police shooting. Body cam footage released by Fort Worth police shows the officer arriving at the house early Saturday morning and looking inside an open front door. When he sees someone standing inside, the officer shouts, then fires his weapon. 28-year-old A. Tatiana Jefferson was taking care of her sick mother's home. Investigators say Jefferson was pronounced dead at the scene. Neighbors say police didn't identify themselves when they arrived. Three or four tactical officers come from around the corner, seem like. Go in front of her house, past the front doors, which were open, in less than a minute. I heard a gunshot. Fort Worth police released a statement saying the officer used his weapon after, quote, perceiving a threat. The family's attorney said the real threat came from police and community members are calling for answers. Rescue crews in New Orleans spent the day searching for a missing worker after a hotel under construction collapsed. Two people were killed when the Hard Rock Hotel came crashing to the ground yesterday. Dozens of people were hurt and one person is still missing. A rescue, as rescue efforts continue, officials face the delicate job of stabilizing the building from further damage. We have someone we have not located and can't get to where we think they might be. In a statement, the contractor, Citadel Builder, said our hearts are broken over the loss of life and for those injured, and our prayers are with them as well as their families. More than two dozen exotic birds were among 53 animals recovered from a Thurston County home. The birds have, and several of other animals are staying at Joint Animal Services in Olympia while a court decides what happens next. The process could take several months and the bird's owner has contested ownership of the animals. In the meantime, the birds are adjusting to the change. They're starting to talk, um, make lots of fun noises. Um, and we're really starting to learn all of their personalities. Hello. In a Facebook post, Joint Animal Services says they're taking monetary donations for the animal's medical needs, gift cards and pet and grocery stores to those stores, and dry food for parrots and bird toys purchased or handmade. If you want to donate, you can find a link on creme.com. Temperatures have been running much colder than average for the last couple of weeks, and meteorologist Michelle Boss will be back to let us know if there's any warmer weather in the forecast next.